Hello everyone. I will talk about uh, long-term induced seismicity on the Mosha Fault by Lama Van Volcano and its implications on the seismic hazard of Tehran megacity. This research was done in collaboration with Prof. Madariaga from ENS in Paris. Here is the region, Lama Van Volcano, Mosha Fault, uh, bolded in red and Tehran city. Tehran is capital of Iran with over 15 million population. It's one of the most hazardous capitals in the world because of existence of several active faults shown in red and also the volcano next to it. Historical earthquakes are shown uh, in green ellipses. Three of them cover all the lengths of uh, Mosha Fault uh, with earthquakes to the magnitude uh, from 6.5 to 7.7 and this event is partially ruptured on the Talagan Fault which is the western continuation of Mosha Fault. Toward the east it reached to Firuzku Fault that is another active fault in the region. So the region is uh, situated in south central Alborz. The main tectonic regime is uh, convergence of Arabian plate to Eurasian plate and also clockwise rotation of South Caspian Basin, uh, which uh, resulted in complex deformation in the region. It is also observable from uh, GPS vectors that are shown in blue with reference to Great Kabir in central Iran. So on 7th of May 2020, uh, an earthquake in Matthew 5.1 occurred just south of the Amavan volcano. Later we will show that this event occurred on the Mosha Fault. Uh, the importance of this event was that after this event, two deaths were reported in Tehran uh, due to a heart attack. And you can see such a moderate magnitude earthquake uh, can be still very important for Tehran. Later, uh, uh, I will show the, the relation between Damovan Volcano and seismicity on the Mosha Fault and this event actually triggered this idea. Here I am showing the seismicity of the region recorded by IRSC network, Iranian Seismological Network. Uh, colors uh, show the depths of events, they are all shallow, less than 25 kilometers. Most of seismicity is uh, distributed on the Sorche Fault, Garmsor Fault, and the Ray Fault, and Firuzku Fault, and also Mosha Fault, mostly on the central segment and partly on the eastern termination. Focal mechanisms with sign G are from GCMT catalog. There are only three of them. Uh, there are only three in in this region, uh, one just south of the Van Volcano and uh, uh, one on the eastern segment of Mosha Fault and the third one near the Great Kabir. The rest of focal mechanisms uh, were part of my master project. Uh, three of them obtained on the uh, Mosha Fault. They are obtained by inverting uh, local waveforms for their moment tensors using point source. So, two of them are just south of the Alvan volcano and the third one on the eastern termination and they show the strike defaulting which is a known mechanism of faulting on the Mosha fault. After the main shock there were several aftershocks here I am showing the aftershocks in the first 40 days after the main shock, uh, there are almost 30 events uh, with magnitude two and a half and higher, with the maximum that occurred uh, 20 days after the main shock, magnitude 4.1, and it had the same mechanism to the main shock. So, in the first step, we computed the hypocenters of the main shock and largest aftershock by visually reading the Mm, crustal phases uh, recorded by Iranian Seismological Center network and uh, also applying the time corrections of stations and also using the velocity model of the area obtained by 
Tatar and colleagues in 2012. We computed that the hypercenter of aftershock uh, is almost 5 kilometers uh, southwest of the main shock. After obtaining the hypocenter for the main shock and largest aftershock, uh, we inverted the uh, local full waveforms of the main shock for its moment tensor. We used isolar code uh, and uh, we adopted the velocity model obtained by Tatar and colleagues 2012 and uh, we searched the uh, Centroid info, centroid location and time where we researched. And so for centroid location, we searched in distance of about 10 kilometers and uh, at different depths. Here you are seeing the result for the depths of 12 kilometers. As you remember, the hypocenter of the main shock has been obtained at, at depths of 14 kilometers. So the best centroid uh, is in distance of 5 kilometers toward the west of the hypocenter, uh, which suggests that the rupture was uh, mostly evolved toward the west and toward the up dip. Here I'm showing the waveform feed, so, which is good, is 74%, and the nodal plane info that uh, later we will use them to. Uh, to obtain the best uh, fault plane uh, that will be used for calculation of extended rupture model for the main shock. After obtaining the moment tensor for the main shock, we used the info of two nodal planes and uh, by inverting the near field strong motion, we retrieved the rupture model uh, for the main shock. We used 10 stations data from Iranian strong motion network. The data was processed and filtered in this range. Elliptical subfault approximation method was uh, used to model the rupture. It has an advantage that it searched for the correct geometry of the rupture and uh, also gives the more robust uh, results compared to other Methods. Here I'm showing different tests uh, for the nodal planes and also uh, more detailed search on the accurate geometry of the ruptured area, uh, which uh, gave uh, this strike and dip for the ruptured area. So we obtained the SS striking fault plane for this event, and in different tests, the uh, rupture evolved toward up deep and uh, toward the west which is toward Tehran. The best model showed that the earthquake nucleated at depths of about 14 kilometers and uh, evolved toward up deep and toward the west with a speed of two and a half kilometers per second and lasted for two and a half seconds and reached to almost depths of uh, eight kilometers. So the rupture did not reach to the surface. Putting uh, all the results together, we reach to uh, this figure. And so the main shock has uh, nucleated at depths of about 14 kilometers and uh, it evolved toward the west and toward up deep uh, until depths of uh, about 9 or 8 kilometers that the rupture stopped. And then the largest aftershock occurred with magnitude 4.1 with almost the same mechanism uh, just at the end of the main shock rupture. Looking into the older catalogs, uh, we find that there were two instrumental earthquakes uh, with magnitude 5.2 and magnitude 4 that occurred in 1930 and 1950. Uh, 55 on both sides of the main shock rupture, which suggests that this part of the fault was partially locked. Here, the yellow circle is the location where Escandaria and colleagues in 2018 observed several uh, hot springs uh, just uh, near the Mosha fault, uh, which later we will show that uh, these are related to the 
Diamondland Volcano and uh, how the seismicity is induced on this segment of the Mosha Fault. The rest of focal mechanisms are uh, from the study uh, of microseismic events uh, by Tatar and colleagues in 2012 and uh, they also located all of the events uh, on this segment of Mosha and uh, the focal mechanisms are showing the extractural structural slip faulting on this segment. In order to better investigate the uh, seismicity along the Mosha Fault, uh, we selected all the earthquakes that uh, occurred in distance of 5 km from uh, this fault in the IRSC catalog uh, starting from 1995. So I set them in three different uh, catalogs, uh, one from 1995 to 2006, which the locations were not that reliable, and from 2006 to 2020, the, until before the main shock, and uh, also after the 2020 main shock. Here you can see the cumulative uh, scalar seismic moment uh, shows two peaks uh, on both sides of the main shock rupture, which uh, suggests that this part of the fault was partially uh, locked, as was also uh, suggested uh, by those uh, instrumental events that were not in the IRSC network, the one of uh, 1930 and 1955. And the red then down is the cumulative scalar seismic moment uh, from 2006 until August 2020, which shows the main peak just south of the Amavan volcano on the central segment of Mosha Fault. And the two other segments are not showing uh, much scalar seismic moment release. And the black is related uh, to the 1930 and 1955 earthquakes and uh, the one of 1930 with magnitude 5.2 the peak is very uh, sharp and putting all of them together we see that uh, just south of the Amavan volcano the maximum uh, cumulative scalar seismic moment is observable integrating all previous studies that are listed here uh, about the the uh, elasticity anomalies minute Zamovan volcano and also uh, its magma chamber. We reach to this image that the southern part of Zamovan uh, toward Mosha has the young magma chamber of Zamovan, and also on the northern side is the old magma chamber that now is solidified. So uh, we suggest that uh, the existing heat due to this uh, magma chamber has raised the pore pressure on the Mosha fault and uh, this reduced the effective normal stress on this fault and on clampit which facilitate the nucleation of earthquakes and expansion of rupture on this segment of the fault. So we suggest that uh, this segment of the fault uh, will have higher seismic activity uh, while it may not be able to accumulate a considerable amount of uh, tectonic uh, stress and uh, may change the seismic behavior compared to its eastern and western segments. Gravity modeling results by Alexey Peshnikov also confirms the existence of a branch of the Damovan magma chamber. Here I am uh, showing uh, the magma chamber of Damovan together with uh, the rupture model that we obtained and the uh, seismicity along the Mosha fault. Uh, 